Well, look who I got here. Uh, Award-winning, most hardest working media guy <laughs> in Baton Rouge in the LSU market. Jacques Doucet with us filling in for Buddy Sanji. Got another practice report. Practice report number two for the 2023 fall camp here at LSU. We had 15 minutes indoors. Uh, back indoors this morning. I'm assuming they're going to go outside again for the back half. Uh, hot as hell out here. Uh, Jacques, what have you seen the first two days? First of all, I appreciate that very kind introduction. Uh, great to be with you today. This isn't work, folks. This is the greatest job in the world. We get to talk about LSU football, but I believe yesterday they went nine periods indoors, nine periods outdoors. And look, it's my pet peeve personally in April when somebody says, oh, it's so hot, I can't go outside when it's like 80 degrees. And it's like, you know what's coming, right? But perhaps I'm becoming what I despise because this summer, we are eight or nine degrees above where we should be as far as highs every day. Instead of 93, 94, we're 102, 103. I think we hit 104. Jay Grimes in the, uh, in the weather department says, look, some of these all-time highs that were recorded back in 1908, 1920, he goes, I'm very doubtful. I think the equipment was shoddy. Uh, shoddy? Not good. Anyway, so I think perhaps we've had some of the hottest days in the history of Louisiana recently. So uh, at least one player kind of uh, had a had a uh, threw up in front of me yesterday who was getting acclimated to things. Juice Chestnut. Well, I didn't want to name his name, but there well, you go. Well, I did yesterday, so okay. it's well, out. It's out there, so he'll laugh about that, I'm sure. But, you know, we're not in Syracuse anymore. You know, I I've heard about... Uh, people that graduate from Syracuse in May at their graduation, it snows, you know, so welcome to the heat. But yeah, um, they have a feeling, uh, Mike, they're a good looking team. They look good in the uniform. I have a sense that they're much more organized than they were a year ago. I just have a really good feeling about this team. Now, if that's 11 and two and winning a New Year's Day six bowl, are you okay with that? Or have we, re have we established some ridiculous uh, notion that if Brian Kelly doesn't win a national championship in the wake of Kim Mulkey and Jay Johnson, he hasn't come through. Well, you you said 11, and I'm the guy that's been saying 11 and 1 for months. And I don't know, you know, maybe I'm not listening to everybody out there in the local media. Uh, but what, what do you think the consensus is so far? Because I'm at 11 and 1. Uh, and, 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 and I think this offense, you nailed it. I think they can pick their points. I, I, I just think they're going to be so devastating. You know, again, we always put a caveat on it. If they stay healthy, I, I think the offensive line, I know Brian Kelly likes to say he wants to fill up with high school guys, and he's not where Georgia is with, uh, you know, two and three deep, um, you know, or being a handful of players away. When he, and I, and I think when he says that, he's talking about the difference maker guys. Um, but look at what he did last year with a skeleton roster and, and filling in the gaps with a bunch of transfer guys from, from mid-major programs. Uh, I, I like the schedule. And um, and I'm also I also think LSU's going to win in Tuscaloosa. Well, a year ago they were picked fifth out of seven teams in the SEC West. Vegas had them at six and a half wins. So I think this year Vegas has them maybe at ten wins, nine and a half. I think it was nine and a half regular season. I think that could get revised up. Yeah. So look, I haven't felt this good about a starting quarterback going into a year since Joe Burrow, and in eight and nineteen going into the year, Burrow he had he had finished the year strong and I had the feeling that they could do big things on offense because of what I saw in that bowl game against Central Florida where I think he threw for 400 yards and Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson all those guys went off and they were all coming back Did I think he was going to throw 60 touchdowns no and when the Heisman no <laughs> but this year with Jaden Daniels look for years what did we say oh you can't beat Alabama with a drop back passer Danny Etling Zach Mettenberger these guys and then uh, Joe ran just enough I think 65 yards in Tuscaloosa to win that game now you got a guy last year who late in the game on a third and long, he runs for a big game, throws the touchdown pass to Mason Taylor, and then in overtime uh, runs for the touchdown. And now he, we got a quarterback that runs too much. Now, look, he needs to throw more touchdowns. He threw 17 touchdowns last year in 14 games. That's low. Now he ran for 11 touchdowns, so that makes 28 in 14 games. That's two touchdowns a game. But I think they want to see Jaden Daniels' touchdown passes in the high 20s this year and look let it rip down the field I, Brian Thomas is my sentimental favorite to be the breakout player of the year he's had two solid years in his junior year in his NFL year so to speak I'd like to see him have a huge year and I think Chris Hilton also is a guy that we haven't seen a whole lot of because injuries he looks good also well you you also said something right there uh, Jaden Dans with all the rushing yards uh, I, I think Brian Kelly would be highly disappointed if if Jaden Daniels is the leading rusher on this team again. Uh, John Emery back at practice today, like he said he would be. 
and uh, eight runner to you, maybe. I don't know if I. I need to look at him. Yeah. I zoomed in on him a good bit on our video. You'll be able to check that on Tiger Bait. Jock shot video, obviously for AFB. But um, I, I need to look at him. Yeah. Um, you know, I think Caleb Jackson stand there makes a lot of them, and uh, it, it's not like Caleb's you know this big huge guy, but the way he's put together. I mean, he's the guy that um, is really, I think, of, of the running back group is, is the most impressive. But I'll be shocked if, or, or I'll say, I think Brian Kelly will be disappointed if Jaden Daniels is his leading rusher. And I do think those t touchdown total throwing the ball is going to be uh, substantially higher. I, I, I think he's in the upper 20s, close to 30 uh, or more. I mean, I, I just, I, I, from what we've seen the first two days, and look, a lot of it's, uh, like Brian Kelly said yesterday, no edge rush, no, pa oh, no pressure. And uh, he's throwing it down the field, and, and uh, corners uh, have, having some struggles. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna jump on, on the corners and set, cornerbacks and all that and say they're gonna be lousy. Um, that is a work in progress, but I think they're gonna have a solution there. Well, uh, Jaden Daniels is the most electric runner I think in LSU history from the quarterback spot. Herb Tyler was very good. The Florida game, obviously, in '97 was his finest hour. But I I, I don't think LSU's ever had a quarterback that. From the press box sometimes, it looks like he's not even trying, and he just sprints away from defenders. I remember the Ole Miss game here last year. It looked like Ole Miss, they're all chasing him, and Jaden's just, you know, trotting into the end zone. So when you've got a guy like that, when the play breaks down and the defense has it di diagnosed and he can run for 30 yards, that's big. Now, obviously, he got hurt late in the year. He stayed healthy all year long. So obviously, once again, can he stay healthy running the ball? Uh, back to the running back spot, uh, Diggs from Notre Dame. What's his first name? Uh, Logan. Logan. Uh, as you and I were walking out of practice, as they, as they threw it out, threw us out, I, I looked down and saw him, and he was making him a move and you know taking off like we were from me to you or a little bit further away, and, and like wow, that looks pretty good too. So he's another guy that factors in. And then John Emery, you know, we, we saw a handful of things last year, the uh, the Auburn game where they had him stop dead to rights in the backfield. He spins out, scores a touchdown. Receiving game in the flat, the Alabama game here. Uh, we saw what he can do, but the question is at this point in his fifth year and in the second year with Brian Kelly It's coach Kelly and the staff look we're exhausted with this guy enough is enough He's on the team. Can he help us? But he may be in the back of the line I don't know. I'd like to see John Emery have a big year, but at some point it's like hey man Gotta get the act together. All right guys, of course this practice report brought to you by the Smokey Investment team being overwhelmed by all the social media in today's world. It's so difficult to know what facts are that's where the Smokey Investment Team comes in. They will help you manage your money and make the decisions best suited for you and your family. When you invest your money with the Smokey Investment Team, you get over 40 years of investment experience. Let Brian and Bart Smokey help you uh, plan the future that you want. Give them a call, 318-448-3201. That's 318-448-3201. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor member, F-I-N-R-A slash S-I. PC and uh, and I got my Voshan shirt on Youngsville, Louisiana. I played there uh, July 5th day after the 4th It was the best the course has ever looked. It was great. I had a great time So maybe today by being wearing this shirt, maybe I get one, you know, free uh, Green there you, free. Go. there you go. Let me ask Re you one free round of golf <laughs> Jane Daniels Heisman hype you buying it you think he's legit. You know, I mentioned that I, I mentioned that earlier like back in the spring that he makes the kind of plays that pop that Heisman Trophy winners will see on highlights and that'll get their attention, his running and his his passing when he lets it rip. And I said, he could be in the Heisman Trophy discussion. And then I felt kind of bad about that. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. But then when we go to SEC Media Days, that's a big storyline. Second highest odds to Caleb Williams for USC, who won the award last year. Look, Caleb's odds are very high. Uh, Jaden's a distant second. But uh, sure, in, in the competition he plays against, that first game right out of the box, the entire world's gonna be watching. Some people saying the big, biggest non-conference game of the year with Florida State. Two top 10 teams, I would believe. Packed stadium, huge television ratings. If he can have a big game in that one and get it started right, yeah, I, I think that uh, that he can be in that in well, that you, discussion. You know, I, I don't know if it's partially because baseball season ran all the way to the end, and so we've got a, a, a we've had a shorter window of uh, analysis paralysis or football talk in the dead days of summer. But I will say this, I, I've not heard, you know, you've had, I, I, I thought we would have a full summer of Nussmeyer versus Daniels. The, the guys in the in the public uh, locally who, you know, uh, Daniels aggravated him for his, uh, you know, missing, not getting rid of the ball quick enough and clamoring for Nussmeyer. But I think that's been largely quiet this summer. Well, the decision to take Jaden Daniels to media days, 
And some people may say, well, big deal. Who, who cares? I think that's a big decision. That sets the tone right away. This is our guy. This is the face of our team, or one of them. We're putting him out in front. And the years in which LSU had a quarterback competition, Brandon Harris, Anthony Jennings, uh, Danny Etling, Brandon Harris. Last summer, Miles Brennan was on the team, and he was a sentimental favorite for a lot of people. And then it be became apparent two weeks into camp that he was third or fourth on the depth chart, and he wasn't going to play. They didn't take a guy to media days well, all those years. When, so. you're, when it's a no-brainer that your starting quarterback is going with you to media day, uh, to me that tells you that you're in great shape and uh, in, in competitive uh, for championships. Yeah, and look, no smire. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar on the calendar. There's no way he's going to lead the team before the season opener, right? No, no. So uh, if they can pitch it to you him. You can only do that if he was a grad. If they can pitch it to him, Mike, hey, look. No matter what happens this year, this can be your show for two years after this. You'll be the starting quarterback. You run the show. If you can be patient in, in a uh, time where nobody is patient, then, uh, look, big things can happen. I think the hope is that he can get a lot of more opportunity. That it, His entrance into football games isn't like last year where he, you know, so that way you don't go into 2024 saying, you know, we still don't really know what he can do in, in having a full game or whatever. Uh, not to say that you want Jane Daniels to get nicked up and miss a game or two. But you do want them to get more opportunities than five minutes in the, in the left in the fourth quarter, and you're up by four or five scores and and, and you know handing off. Uh, you, I think you legit want to get him some real opportunities uh, to move the team against good competition. Well, I don't know, for you old timers, I don't know if they're going to do the old uh, Tommy Hots and Mickey Gidry thing, where but Gidry got one series per half. Yeah, the was... old uh, Ed Zombreaker special that uh, drove everybody crazy. <laughs> but I remember 1988. 35 years ago, uh, earthquake game, 35 years old this year, folks. Uh, when Gidry would come in, they would score like 70% of the time or something like that. And Hudson, who was an all-time hero, even at that point, some people say, well, maybe Gidry should play more. But, uh, yeah, I, I would like to see Nussmeyer get some more snaps. But if you listen to Kelly, he doesn't sound like a guy who's going to play two or rotate or that kind of thing. Yep. So, I don't know. You guys, if you're enjoying this content, please hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button, notification bell. Obviously, we're going to have a lot of LSU football content coming your way right here on our YouTube channel. And uh, before I, I let Jacques get out of here, talk about uh, the big show coming up, Red Rock and Blue, and, and let, let's sell some tickets. Well, we've had a great year for Red Rock and Blue, a great summer. For those of you who don't know what Red Rock and Blue is, we're a 501c3 nonprofit charity organization we raise money for Louisiana military charities uh, those who have served and their families redrockandblue.com redrockandblue.com is our website we give to the Blue Star Mothers of Louisiana Wounded War Heroes not the Wounded Warrior Project that's something national that's gotten a little bit of bad press that's not who we give to we keep everything locally and uh, we've had a great softball tournament. Our good friend Ben Cassio put together a catering reunion at the Varsity that almost sold out the building, packed house. That, that was amazing. It was awesome. Biggest show the Varsity's had since COVID. Uh, and we had 15, we, we, we gained $15,000. We grossed, cleared it on that show. And so now we got one more big event. Our big softball tournament was a, was, was a major success as well. So we've got Vertical Horizon, multi-platinum artists. They sold over 3 million copies of the album, Everything You Want, which featured the number one hit, Everything You Want, number one on Billboard, most played song of the year in the year 2000, and then followed it up with hits, You're a God and Gray Sky Morning, Best I Ever Had. So you'll hear all those great hits, plus much more at the Varsity Theater, August the 19th. We've sold plenty of tickets, but plenty of tickets are still on sale. We would like to sell it out August the 19th, Vertical Horizon at the Varsity. Tickets at varsitytheater.com or at the door if there's still any left. All right, guys. Also, uh, we talked about the heat earlier. Get over to Drip IV on Perkins Road next to Iverstein Farms. Uh, they've got uh, Brittany and her staff have it all laid out for you. Say Tiger Bait, and they're going to give you 10% off. Uh, everybody right now, is hardly anybody's fully hydrated. Whether you've got flu symptoms, whatever it might be, just to get hydrated this time of year will make you feel 100% better. Go over to Drip IV on Perkins Row and say Tiger Bay. Thanks to uh, Smoky Investment Team for sponsoring these reports. And uh, we'll see you guys on the other side. Thank you.